first at nine. Hello and a very good evening to you. Welcome to your prime time news bulletin at 9 here on MTV Sports and Shakti TV from our news first centers here in Colombo. I'm Shahin Jurangpati. And I'm Nikola Dizoiza. Well, the United Nations Refugee Agency says that 2 million Syrians are now refugees as the US and France are pushing for military action over chemical weapons claims. The news first international desk has been monitoring the situation in Syria since the unrest began and we'll take a comprehensive look later on in the news. But before that, here's a look at your headlines. Headlines on News First at 9. Minister of External Affairs says that the statements made by Navi Pillay on Sri Lanka lack fairness. Complaints lodged with election observers charging that some of the officers are being used for election activities. TNA unveils its election manifesto for the northern province. Data record book on tame elephants remain missing. Another revelation from the Minister of Wildlife. News first at nine. We are speaking at the news briefing at the Sri Lankan High Commission in London yesterday. Minister Professor G.L. Pierce, who was briefed in London to deliver the keynote address at a Cambridge Symposium on Economic Crime, noted that Sri Lanka invited the Human Rights Chief to visit Sri Lanka two years ago as it had nothing to hide. Issuing a media release, the Minister of External Affairs notes that Professor Piris said Pillay's report is indicative of a prejudiced mind and in no way shows the fairness and open-mindedness of an official undertaking such a mission, the longest she has spent in any one country. Professor Piris said, quote, What we find disturbing is the tone and substance of her report, the lack of fairness and balance, unquote. The minister had also said that to dismiss the achievements Sri Lanka has made post-war as just physical reconstruction, as Nami Pillay has done, is simply not the case. He added that there was no empirical evidence to support Pillay's claim that Sri Lanka was moving towards authoritarianism, noting that the people of the north who lived under the LTTE had no suffrage for 25 years, but the present government has provided them with the opportunity of expressing themselves later this month. Professor Pierce said the UN Human Rights Chief's prejudice and lack of fair-mindedness is further shown by her talk of numerous war crimes committed by the government. He notes that while previously Pillay mentioned allegations of war crimes, according to her, it is no longer allegations but proven fact. Rejecting out of hand Navi Pillay's remarks on the intimidating presence of the military in the north and the fear of the people and women there, Professor Pierce had said that it is a pity that the High Commissioner had not read the reports produced by UN officials in Colombo who belie this claim, having themselves interviewed nearly 200 people, chosen by the UN itself, 90% of whom said they were comfortable with living there. The release notes that answering questions posed by the media, Professor Piri said that he expects countries to be objective of Sri Lanka and was critical of the voting patterns in the UN Human Rights Council, which did not seem to be based on the merits of the case. The minister said that he was not criticizing the Human Rights Commissioner out of rancor, but of deep sadness, as he found that her report lacked the fairness, open-mindedness and balance that was expected of her. Uh, at the press conference, she named two or three cases of the people who were intimidated, contacted by security services. Well, she has not informed us. We, 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 we said categorically, please let us know. So that means that you are not going to investigate because she has an action. No, 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 no. We, we, we don't wish to be we don't wish to be technical about it. If the details given are sufficiently specific and capable of investigation. We shall certainly investigate. It is very much in our interest to do so. Why must we give her access everywhere on the island if it is not our intention that, sh that she should see for herself? We don't have to give her access. But we did. And she acknowledges that. So how does it make sense for us to do that and then prevent her from meeting people? Well, it's not to be that. So if, if it has happened, we would like to know about it. And certainly we will investigate. And do you guarantee that, I'm sorry, I'm just... No, no, that's okay. Do, do you guarantee that no one will have, will suffer consequences because they spoke to Nabi Pillar? Yes, yes, certainly, certainly, absolutely. We do not intend to penalize anybody who spoke to Nabi Pillar. They, they have every right to speak to her. She has every right to speak to people that she wants to meet. That was the whole idea. Otherwise, why, why, why give her that opportunity? 
I would now like to turn to a disturbing aspect of the visit, visit, namely the harassment and intimidation of a number of human rights defenders, at least two priests, journalists, and many ordinary citizens who met with me or planned to meet with me. This type of surveillance and harassment appears to be getting worse in Sri Lanka, which is a country where critical voices are quite often attacked or even permanently silenced. Utterly unacceptable at any time, it is particularly extraordinary for such treatment to be meted out during a visit by a UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. The election manifesto prepared by the Tamil National Alliance for the Northern Province was unveiled this morning at the Ilanga Tamil Arasakacha office in Jaffna. Now, subsequent to the unveiling of the election manifesto, members of the Tamil National Alliance made clarifications regarding its contents. <laughs> Development is the only word this government knows. However, for them, people need not be developed. For them, development means making the roads of the south, laying down those roads, the construction of bridges, and the providing of electricity. The people need to be developed. If the government is of such a view, the people should not be fooled by it. The Sri Lankan government is violating all international agreements. The international community should not remain idle. At such a time, the international community has the right to implement the law. The international community is doing it. We accept it. The Sri Lankan government government has not taken any steps to resolve the national issue. We believe that there needs to be a permanent solution to the national issue with the assistance of the international community. Our people are faced with a lot of difficulties according to the current situation. The biggest problem is the presence of the army. If they don't leave, we cannot do anything here. We have to take measures to get the army to leave from here as soon as possible. But we cannot do this. The government has to discuss this with us and take a decision. We have to take measures to have our people return to their lands and to receive compensation. We are working towards that. We are also still unaware of the fate of the people who disappeared. There are people who were arrested and now their fate is unknown. Charges have not been filed against them either. We need to find a solution to all of this. These are the contents of our manifesto. The election secretariat notes that it has received reports of 277 incidents where election laws have been violated. Now the complaint unit of the secretariat said that it has received 41 complaints regarding the misuse of state vehicles and 50 complaints regarding pub public officials being employed for election campaigning. Meanwhile, a shop on a plot of land in Mahawa where a meeting of the Democratic Party was held recently was set alight and destroyed by a certain group yesterday. I lodged a complaint with the police and I came to the scene with the police. I gave permission for Fonseca to hold a meeting here. The meeting was held on the 1st. By last night, the shop had been set ablaze. I hope that justice will be served through the law since we are citizens of this country. Meanwhile, the leader of the Democratic Party, Sarat Fonseca, visited the Candy Teaching Hospital today to inquire into the well-being of a Democratic Party candidate who was injured in a recent attack and hospitalized. Our candidate, Herat Banta, who is an indigenous medicine doctor, was attacked by thugs last night. The person accompanying the thugs was a government provincial councillor who is in charge of that electorate. We condemn this with much distaste. No. Meanwhile, election monitors say they have received complaints that some of the officials are being used for election campaigning. We addressed a letter to the Commissioner General of some of the yesterday as well regarding complaints we have received about some of the officials being employed for political activity. Our request was that steps be taken to prevent such a situation from arising in the future. This situation was reported from every electorate in the Norelia, Kurunagala and Kandy districts. Complaints were also received from four electorates in the Putlam district of some of the officials being employed for election campaigning. Complaints have been received from the Kurunagala district that these officials are even being used for fundraising. 
Elections are to be held in certain areas. As a result, we are faced with various situations because some parties say that work has not been done in some areas. Other groups say that the things that must be done by our officials are not being done in some areas. Therefore, we have got together and instructed all officials to carry out their responsibilities. If I receive reports that some officials are acting based on their personal allegiances or their location, then I can investigate those reports. Now, as the provincial council polls draw near, the campaigning has also stepped into high gear with various political parties and candidates holding meetings in areas where elections are scheduled to be held. Let's have a listen to some of the views expressed at several such meetings. The Mahindu Chintanaya has provided the villagers with the facilities that were exclusive to the cities. These programs will also be implemented in all other areas, not only in the villagers, by the allocations made from the budget. When the storybook was introduced six years ago, even the infant was paying an annual tax of 17,000 rupees. So from every purchase you make from sugar to your child's footwear, you will be paying an annual tax of 42,000 rupees. I believe that it is your responsibility to cast your ballot to the beat leave and those contesting under it. At this moment, I wish to remind you that when you cast your ballot, you need to think that this will be the ballot to protect the motherland and your children. Continue operating the provincial councils. That is one more year. The provincial councils are not a game. They are trying out their luck by coming here. What is the system that is being operated at present? I wish to ask, is it right for their supporters and henchmen to commit murders? There are some sent to the gallows and some in jail. Some are out on bail. I wish to ask them, if it is right to molest an underage child, is it right to rape a woman? The chairman representing the Beetle Leaf is soliciting a bribe from another chairman also representing the Beetle Leaf. Is this system right? I was not included in Ranil Vikramasinghe's agenda. Now I am in the agenda of Mahindra Rajapaksa. I am here to protect Mahindra Rajapaksa and the government. We never accepted the agendas of Ranil Vikramasinghe and never will. They attempted to initiate a program to humiliate Sri Lanka by bringing Navi Pillay. <laughs> There is a silent terror everywhere. We are doing all these things in fear of that terror. Ask yourselves. You will understand the level of democracy in the country. That is why we created a new party. What usually happens is that the ball is passed from the ruling party to the opposition. That is how the country is ruled. Yet we have never been given any relief anywhere. We do not have a strong opposition, let alone a government. That is a known fact. Because there is no strong opposition, the ruling party is doing things as per its whim and fancy. Minister of Health Maitri Pala Sirisena, who was awarded the 2013 Global Excellence Award by the World Health Organization, was presented, the, presented with the award by President Mahindra Rajapaksa Paksa this morning. Uh, now, the presentation ceremony took place at the BMICH. Minister Maitri Pala Sirisena, who was also honoree of the 2013 Harvard Health Leaders Award as well, Vice Chancellor of the University of Colombo, Professor W.K. Hiramuregama, presented the award to the minister. Uh, minister Maitri Pala Sirisena, who was present at the World's No Tobacco Day Award 2013 by the World Health Organization, commenced his anti drug campaign in 1994. The minister's efforts against the use of tobacco and alcohol in his capacity of minister was appreciated by all 194 members of the World Health Organization. The group, including the chief pilot of the Sri Lanka Amarapura sect, Venerable Dawood Nyanis Sarotero, members of the Mahasangha, government ministers, ambassadors, and the Minister of Health from Thailand, Pradit Sintavanarong, were present at the event.